on the bottom right side we see Rover, aka Cooper, um, as a pink orc. And he's playing with Blade Master first. Nothing special here versus oh a Tavern Hero base play out of Star Shape, which is kind of unusual versus Orc nowadays, I guess. And he is going for a hunter's build, uh, hunter's build as well, as his name suggests. Most of the time he prefers huntresses. I think in almost any possibility where he has an opportunity to play hunters, um, he yeah takes that choice. And it is going to be Beastmaster most probably, because everything else would be super special in my opinion. And yes, we see um, standard build order by the Orc player. Let's see what his first approach is going to be, concerning that his rule launch is kind of early. Um, yeah, so if he's going to sp uh, to play really aggressive right from the start, I guess you could also build that Voodoo launch uh, in that tech. And yeah, both players are going to miss each other, and now there's the Scout Peon in the base of Star Shaped, and the Beastmaster is going to yeah try to go for some harassment, but there's a Grunt and a weird pla weirdly placed Orc Burrow. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was uh, fooling around with the settings there in the early game. You okay, man? Uh, yeah, okay? I think I think everything is good now. Good, man. I had to uh, turn the shadows on again and stuff because I think uh, people think it looks kind of weird with the shadows off. <coughs> Anyways. That's, looks like they are swimming or floating. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, Beastmaster first. Um, with Starshay being the underdog here. Do you agree with this choice of playing something weird, something surprising? Do you think um, he has to do this to to win versus? No, Korea? I don't think. I I don't know, man. The Star Shape has been around for such a long time. I don't think he's he's like the big big underdog. I think he just likes to play weird strategies. Um, yeah, it's, it's still it's weird, of course, man. I don't I don't really know what to make of it yet, but. I think this kind of tier oh, 2 second hero, maybe yeah. keeper, maybe some tavern hero push with some age protector to back it up could be really strong versus Orc. And as we see, both techs are um, almost at the same, they have been started almost at the same time. With the United player even having a slight advantage in that regard. And now, yeah, there was a short harassment. I th it's like, yeah, it feels a bit like killing time. One grunt has already been. Um, they did quite some damage too. And Starshade, of course, going for the units <coughs> that he's most known for, which is uh, the Huntresses. That's the reason why Warchief Rich's uh, ladder name is Huntress Shaped. That is a reference yeah. to his friend uh, Starshaped, who always, pretty much always at least, goes for Huntresses. Yes. And um, yeah, on his stream, he also occasionally streams. In his description, he has a, a, l a little bit of text where it says that he thinks APM is underrated. What counts is HPM, which is Huntresses per minute. So ah, you mean APM is overrated? Yeah, that's what he says. What he says uh -huh. what counts is HPM, uh, Huntresses mm -hmm. per minute. Is that <coughs> <coughs> yeah, he says something similar before that game. He says, ah, I don't know something about Huntresses. <laughs> Mind. Um, yeah, we have a quite early war mill. Which is not normal in this regard, um, and he has a weird but I guess clever building placement, with a warmer being in front, and then I called it as the first age protector, and the blade master still having close to no experience points, just you know, not even half of uh, level two there, and now he got a speed score up, and I guess this all looks kind of good for oh, starting replacement, especially blocked. with a oh. yeah. Too With the Blade Master long. now being uh, forced to use his Windwalk and healing. And now, yeah, well, the first engine protect is already there, and the second hero is going to be. It should have taken some 40 more gold. Fire Lord. He hasn't gotten boots of speed, by the way. He wants to invest all of his money into defense, probably, because of there's the There's a Fire Lord, there's a Fire Lord. And yes, there is a Fire Lord second. As you said, Tavern Hero push coming in. I would have loved to see, uh, would have loved to see tier three huntresses, but that doesn't really happen anymore. Oh yeah, that would be so cool. Those glaives. Um, okay, so now we will see if this is going to be a uh, success or not. Blade Master it gets quite some damage early on, and without critical strike, he doesn't s seem to be very threatening to this composition. 
Isn't this supposed to, to be wor uh, to be working? What do you mean working? Yeah, I mean the Night of Player seems to be very well. Yeah, okay. Let's see. There's a demolisher. And yeah, yeah, demolisher is coming out, and he could even he's going for one tower already. So yeah, yeah the orc is weak, but his defense in the base is strong. Yes, and as we can see, um, he didn't. Uh, Cooper didn't cancel the B3, so he lacks quite a substantial amount of wood. But he doesn't have any space on the back of the space at the moment anyway, so no B3. But there's the first demolisher, and yeah. It's a bit like towering a human player now with a mortar team in, uh, in the back of his base. I really like this building placement, man. There's a nice yeah. bit of avenue here for the demolisher to maneuver around. But now the first real engagement happens. Nice shadow melt, actually, and there's no dust on Cooper. Which is probably a bit of a mistake, he wanted to save as much money as he could for his defense, but the dust would have been definitely worth it. But it's only going to be 20 more minutes, or a few seconds in fact, of night time. So the Huntress is going to die shortly before it turns day, and now it is daytime. Yeah, and this Demolisher seat. man is just not being touched at all and he has to TP out now. Yes, nice defense by Cooper. It seems like he fully anticipated what his opponent is going to be up to. Really well done by him, and I guess if... Uh, star shaped uh, didn't go for fire lord I wouldn't call him out here what he's a tree of life this is a huge this is the biggest clusterfuck of all times so with the fire lord second this is this is such a weird game but hey that's this how, so cool. how star shaped plays man he, he plays <coughs> outside Sorry. the box definitely <laughs> yes and, and he's, he's going for talents now and has an expansion but he has tier 2 talents something that is mostly considered useless and he uh, wow, you all started hosting our stream so I could hear our, uh, uh, myself talking in between. So Why do you yeah. have the mu uh, the sound still on on his stream, man? No, it's, it wasn't on, but it gets turned on again ah, yeah, that's when true. he that's starts hosting. Yeah, that, that's it's so true, bad. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he saw that his opponent is going to be prepared really well for his push and started to build a Tree of Life immediately, considering his nice timing here. This is really cool. Like. It will take Cooper one more. Uh, w yeah, he has to think to anticipate this. Like it's it's a Sherlock Sherlock move which he lacked here, because this is so anti-climax to have this Knight of Expansion set up now. And I guess normally the Orc player would be fine and just creeping now, right? Yeah, in hindsight, that push was really smart by Star Shaped. Mm. I think Star Shaped knew. That if he would go for something weird, uh, the orc would kind of over defend because the orc maybe thinks he's better and he just has to hold off the cheese. But you know, reverse psychology, it yeah. wasn't even an all in, it was just a uh, distraction from the expansion, which I think that's really, really cool from Star Shaped. I'm uh, a bit impressed here. Yeah, me too. I'm super impressed, especially considering that he saw how his opponent is going to be prepared in the first place, so he switched strategies really quickly. I don't know yet about how this is going to uh, continue because we have we now have only an Ancient of Wind we will see lots of yeah, archers and uh, talents and this is a uh, this is not a classic army composition that we see here from the Knight of Player maybe he might be adding um, another Ancient of Law here to, to even add some Dryads which would be a pretty old school composition archers, Dryads and uh, talents <laughs> Oh my player God, called never, Wolf. I've never seen that before. <laughs> A player called Wolf back then played it all the time. It was really good. Is it the but Wolf that still casts today? The Russian? No, no. What Wolf? You mean you mean the StarCraft 2 Wolf, the Korean? No, uh, I mean I mean uh, Wolverine. Uh, no. But he no, no. He's, uh, uh, no. Wolf is short for it. He was, was a French guy. Okay. Um, mm, I mean, yeah. Well, let's see. Supply-wise, 55 versus 48, and now there's going to be a fight happening, I guess. But look at this army. Oh yeah. It's nothing. It's so yeah. Where where is Cooper's supply? What the hell? It's it says fi oh look attack. at this Spirit Walker stuck in base. There's uh, three supply missing. But anyways. He ca there's no way he kills this. This no. was the second to last heal wave after he uses the clarity. There's yeah. no way in hell he's breaking through here. Great position he has well for starting at the start of the, of the fight and now everything is so damaged already. I was concerned a bit that I, I thought it would be a great choice to have a, an Agent of Wonders, emergency Agent of Wonders, because all that could happen for him that could lose him this, such a fight would be um, hero focus. But with the Blade Master only being level 2 and the Shadowhander not provi providing healing waves, 
uh, yeah, level two healing waves. This should be nice. One for starter. I don't know if I agree with him being offensive so quickly, though. But yeah, what, what, what does he have to be afraid of here? Nothing. He only loses a Huntress. So it's uh, not that big of a deal. Yeah. And you gotta think here. It's not just him being offensive. It's also he's driving the opponent away from his expansion. Yeah. So yeah. it's a good, uh, uh, good bit of positioning here by him. Driving yeah. Rover all the way back. Well, Cooper, that is of course. Back. And now he's taking to tier three. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, I guess he has an idea behind this. Yeah, he needs an expansion in the long run, and uh, when he gets higher hero levels, I guess the fire lord gets a bit weaker. But he's now level three, and now I think it's oh, it's star shaped uh, time to shine already because he has the expansion. He can afford losing some units, but I think this is now really, really terrible spot for Cooper because the summons are just so strong. We have three decent chance. That was the first oh one, yeah. and he needs to use those on the summons, of course. If the uh, Fire Lord and Beastmaster can have all the summons they want, there's no chance. Cooper can defend this even without there being any summons. It's kind of a tough thing to do. Scroll of Protection being used on everything. Perfect positioning of that scroll. And Cooper, the Orc player, being driven back into his base here. Loses the first Berserker. Blade Master needs to be careful, and he gives up. Sees wow. no chance of coming back here. That was a great play of chess, man. It was checkmate. Yeah, I also so feel that was, that was a so really nice. good strategy, man. Like yeah. Really cool play. I love that, man. It's so It was so much more enjoyable than standard uh, uh, tail and play.